As a chronic pelvic pain specialist, um, we have to deal a lot with visceral pain, which is very different uh, when we compare it with somatic pain. Um, visceral pain, uh, because of the pathways of that pain coming from the visceral organs, they're different than the somatic ones a lot of the times. They don't necessarily follow the same peripheral nerves. They often follow autonomic um, nerves. And, and it makes this kind of symptoms that the patients will refer very vague. So visceral pain often is very vague. Clinically speaking, it's a pain that is very poorly localized. Patients have really hard time to pinpoint where the exact pain is. And if we think about the neuroanatomy of the visceral innervation, um, there are different organs that are covering in the entire abdomen and the pelvic region. That includes the bladder, in the case of females, the uterine, uh, the uterus itself, the fallopian tubes, the ovaries, the lower part of the sigmoid and the rectum. And um, there's a very interesting phenomenon when it comes to visceral uh, pathways that is called viscerosomatic conversion in which um, is basically the explanation of the referred pain when there's visceral pain, which make things even much more challenging for us um, when we deal with chronic abdominal pelvic pain. Because sometimes patients might have uh, an inflammatory process or a certain kind of injury at a visceral organ, but then they will feel the pain referred in a somatic area. So that a lot of times makes that kind of symptom much more confusing. Um, so it's a very tricky and it's a very difficult um, type of pain that really requires a lot of understanding of the pathways of the bladder, the uterus, and the rectum pain um, in order to be able to kind of separate both of them and try to put them aside and explain it to the patient, right? Because they can have somatic pain coming from the abdominal wall muscles or coming from the pelvic floor muscles which is a totally different kind of perception that they will have when it comes to the pain that they have when they get their periods, like when they have endometriosis or if they have bladder pain when they have bladder pain syndrome. Endometriosis is often a condition that affects uh, the intra-abdominal organs. Um, endometriosis can be within the wall of the uterus, affecting the uterine wall. Um, it could be in the pelvic peritoneum, in the peritoneal layer of the pelvis, and not necessarily invading muscle or ligaments or, or somatic, um, somatic organs. Now it's interesting because endometriosis also has the capability to invade those organs. So there can be an overlap of symptoms. There can be endometriosis invading nerve roots that could lead to neuropathic pain, which would be a totally different descriptor. And the key difference in that case often is the cyclical path of the symptoms, how, how the symptoms present that will come up on a cyclical pattern. Um, another, for example, another example that comes to mind is bladder pain syndrome, right? Uh, bladder pain syndrome is a condition that affects the bladder itself, um, which is totally different than having a problem that often patients will have when they overlap this condition that is called myofascial pain that will give a much more somatic pattern. Somatic pain, the, the best example that I can give when it comes to our field is myofascial pain. Now, myofascial pain um, is basically a condition in which the muscles become uh, very spastic. They become um, non-functional in a way that they will develop areas in which the muscles won't be able to work that well. And often patients will refer to that pain as a chronic sensation of, of a spasm or a cramping sensation or a stabbing kind of sensation, which is clinically reproducible when we do the exam. If we check the abdominal wall muscle, often we'll find areas of trigger points or areas that are very sensitive upon palpation. Um, when we do the pelvic exam, which is a key thing to do in our patients with chronic pelvic pain, we're assessing different pelvic floor muscles, not only superficial but deep in order to find those areas of spasticity and tenderness that often should not be there. It's not normal to have those areas. 
Um, and often it's a consequence of having a, a prior condition that will lead them to chronic spasticity or chronic spastic episodes.